Hi guys, welcome back to Geography Explained Online. Today we're bringing you part two of our synoptic chart videos and we're going to be looking at different pressure systems and the kind of weather that's associated with high and low pressure systems. How have you been? Synoptic charts part two. chart that we looked at last week. Quick revision, we know that these are called our isobars and they connect areas of equal barometric pressure and that's measured in hectopascals. Very good word. They're like normal pascals, but hectic. Yeah. Yeah. So today we're going to be looking at what is created when uh, these isobars form pressure systems and there's two types that we can very clearly see here labelled with our high pressure system and our low pressure system labelled H and L. Yes. So the most um, recognisable and most important feature of a synoptic chart, besides the hectopascals, besides the isobars, are the higher and lower pressure systems. H's and L's, you've probably seen this map of H's and L's all over the place. The whole point of a synoptic chart is to be able to predict and know what the weather's going to do, so how does the H's and the L's help us to understand weather? And the first thing we're always going to remember, this is my biggest pet peeve as a geography teacher, it drives me nuts every single time, no matter how many times I teach this, H does not stand for hot. High and low pressure systems have nothing to do with temperature. It's all about the condition of the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So please, if you get into a geography exam and you forget what it's all about, please don't just write that high equals hot. Mm. You can have the same synoptic chart. Like this synoptic chart, there's no real telltale features that here tell us is it summer or winter or in between. If we had some tropical cyclone activity at the top here, that might suggest that it's the summer. But just because there's not a tropical cyclone doesn't mean it's not summer. So really, unless we looked at the actual date that it's from, it could be middle of winter or middle of summer, and that would have all the effect on temperature and not the highs and the lows. It doesn't affect temperature. All right, let's look at how these two operate. Pause, because we talked. Cool. Now we have a high and a low pressure system together. Essentially, low pressure systems are exactly what they sound to be. There is less air there, the air is under less pressure. High pressure system is where you have more air at the same time, occupying the same space, the pressure is higher. You'll have noticed this if you're ever driving the car down a hill and it ears start to pop. That's because as you go down through the atmosphere, the atmosphere becomes more dense, the pressure goes up, and the air in your head wants to equalise. Air always wants to even itself out and be even everywhere. Air wants to fill the space, air wants to go from high to low. And really that need for air to even itself out really causes all the weather that we're going to talk about. So what does this look like on a synoptic chart? A lot of synoptic charts are actually going to be labelled high pressure systems with a H, low pressure systems with an L. In that case, it's quite easy to know whether we're working with a high pressure system or a low pressure system. However, that's not always the case. And sometimes there won't be a letter in the middle of the pressure system, but it's still really easy to work out which one is high and which one is low. As you can see, what Mr. Sisters just pointed out before I've said it, um, high pressure systems increase in uh, barometric pressure as they move towards the center. Low pressure systems decrease in barometric pressure as they move towards the center. Mm -hmm. As I was just showing on that last map, really air wants to move from a high to a low. And we can see here a high pressure system is this pressure system is air descending and then moving across from the high towards the low where it warms up and rises again. What implications does this have for weather? So many implications, thank you, Mr. Sizio. Sorry. So as we can see, our low pressure systems over here, we've got a few dot points here for you. Our low pressure systems will always move in a clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere. I'm gonna show you a trick soon to remember this because it's a common question. Um, and as that warm air ascends, rises, it's going to cause a lot of precipitation. So when we see a low pressure system, if you have a low pressure system in your synoptic chart, it's likely going to be very unsettled, um, unstable weather, rain, wind, all that kind of stuff. Uh, You're going to have a bad time. Yeah, it's not going to be fun, sorry. On the other side, high pressure systems move in the opposite direction. So in the southern hemisphere, they move anti-clockwise. Um, and as the cool air descends, we get more stable, settled weather. Again, as we said before, one is settled, one is unsettled. Nothing to do at all with temperature. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with hot and cold. Yeah, temperature, again, really depends on the season. All right, guys, so a little trick here to remember which ones go anti-clockwise and which ones go clockwise. Um, if we're working in the southern hemisphere, we reverse it in the northern hemisphere, but we're going to draw an S for southern hemisphere, okay? And then we've got high and low. Which one comes first in the alphabet? H comes before L. So we put H in the top and we put L in the bottom. So which direction does it go? The H, so high goes anti-clockwise. And then when you get down to the bottom, the L goes clockwise. Reverse it for the Northern Hemisphere. 
All right, so we have some satellite images to look at now behind Cisio here on the smart board. Um, and what we can see here, this is actually from Iceland, so we're in the Northern Hemisphere, which means we need to reverse what we said before. So uh, low pressure systems in the Northern Hemisphere are gonna go anti-clockwise. Important to note too, if you ever see a photo of a cloud formation like this, by definition, it's gonna be a low, yep. because a picture of a high would just be a picture of an air. The, the, like, like there'd kind of be a high maybe here, possibly. Just some serious clouds. It's just nothing, yeah. So yeah. You, if you ever see the swirly cloud, it's gonna be a low. And if you see a really intense swirly cloud, it's likely to be a tropical cyclone as well, if you see that in your broadsheets. And if we see that in the north of Australia, it's likely, well, it's not likely, it is going to be, yeah, summertime, going to be summertime, because that's when we have our tropical cyclones. Really mm -hmm. common question in the HSC, what season is it? Mm -hmm. And you see that uh, intense low pressure system, we know that it's summer. Yeah, so tropical cyclone, summer, that's a good giveaway. So let's have another look at, uh, look at another one. Where are we? Oh, wow, this looks familiar. Yeah. Hmm. I, I wouldn't go around here though, but here's good. <laughs> Um, so we can see again low pressure system, but it's going the exact opposite way because of course Australia, Tasmania, Southern Hemisphere. We actually see a little bit of a high over here, a little bit of white cloud and it's sort of swirling out of the high and then into the low. Like yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah, let's have a look at that one. <gasps> Excellent. Mm. Where are we here? Well, we've got a bit sticking down there. and West of Florida. West of Florida. That is a low pressure system, but it's not just any low pressure system. Mm. That's Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. That low pressure system killed like 3,000 people. These can get and really dangerous. you can dangerous. see the eye of a cyclone right in the middle there. It's quite, quite clear to see. Right on New Orleans, unfortunately. Thanks guys for watching part two. We'll be back with part three. Next week, we're gonna be looking at different types of fronts, warm, cold, stationary, occluded, and what they all mean. That sounds really complicated. It's not complicated. We just need to look at a few symbols on a map and work it all out. Oh, that sounds completely reasonable. Exactly. We're also gonna do wind direction, how we can find wind direction on a map. There's no wind out here today, um, but we'll look at some maps that show us a little bit better. Sounds like fun. Definitely. Can you make sure that you please subscribe to our channel, hit that dinger so you get notifications, be a part of a Geo Squad. Also like us on Instagram at geography underscore explained underscore online, and we'll see you next week for more synoptic charts. Thanks everybody. See you Geo Squad. And also, if you have air pressure moving downwards, but then in the southern hem hemisphere, it's going northwards, but then in the middle, it crosses over, and then like at the <sighs> poles, it kind of it goes around the pole. This means nothing, then, ignore. Please don't draw it in your HSC and write to your explain underneath. <laughs>